thought, thought, thought. <laughs> oh, we're alive, we're alive. <laughs> you don't know, have any viewers yet. <laughs> So I tried to go because like my friend and I, my roommate and I we made a pact to like exercise and stuff like that. And then like I got upstairs and I was in my room and I was in my room and I was like, I don't want to go down to the old gym. So it was yeah, no, and I also just like I hate when other people are using the treadmill, like I hate waiting. It's like I didn't want to do that awkward thing where I walk in, see that there's someone there, and then you walk straight out. Oh we have <laughs> No, no, no. Oh, it might be her. I don't know if she's watching it. Oh, okay. Oh, so, oh. Hi. 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 Okay. We should just wait a few minutes, right? We're, we're just going to wait a few minutes, yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, we're going to wait a few more minutes until everyone else can file it. Then give us about like two, three. Two, three minutes. Two, three. <laughs> no, just give us two, three. <laughs> two, three. Oh, no, it dropped. <laughs> <laughs> really? yeah. No, it's, it's back. <laughs> Someone's clearly very excited. <laughs> Honestly, I'm no. very excited. Because we cure it. They keep thinking that you guys are watching. You can join though, um, like this join. No, because then they will hear in the background. <laughs> yeah, they can hear. <laughs> All right, it's two thirty-two. We'll just give it one more minute. minute. One more minute, yeah. and then we'll start. I don't know. There's many. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, I'm Anna. Um, I've been communicating with you guys a lot through the newsletters and unfortunately Anshi couldn't be here today, um, but she says hi. Um, today we're joined by some of our coordinators uh, from the admissions office um, and they'll be helping to answer some of the questions that you all submitted in our hashtag Ask Anna and Anshi uh, portion of the newsletter. And throughout the broadcast, you can submit questions and we will answer those to the best of our ability. We have a lot of different perspective and diverse experiences here among the five of us. Um, so definitely feel free to ask questions and I'll just go around the room and have everyone introduce themselves. Um, Diana, do you want to start? <laughs> I made eye contact. Um, okay, hi, I'm Diana. I'm a rising sophomore here at the college. Um, I'm going to be living in Adam's house for the next three years. Um, I'm concentrating in history and science with the secondary in economics or global health and health policy. Hi, my name's Elizabeth. I'm also a rising sophomore at the college. I'm going to be in Mather House ne next year, which is one of the upperclassmen houses down by the river. Uh, thinking about concentrating in psychology, not too sure yet, uh, but yeah, we'll move on. I'm Marley, also a sophomore, and I'm going to be living in Mather House next year with Elizabeth, um, and I'm probably going to concentrate in chemistry and physics. And I'm Lewis. I'm a rising junior from Queens, New York. I'm concentrating in history and science with a secondary in global health and health policy, and I'm also a resident of Forsheimer House, which is one of the three houses in the quad. Um, and I'm Anna, and <laughs> as you all know, um, I study sociology here. I'm a super senior at Harvard, meaning I took some time off um, during my time here. Happy to talk about that as well. Um, so I've had th four years here at Harvard, so can definitely uh, answer a wide range of questions that you may have. Um, so we'll start answering some of the questions that you all submitted. Um, so for the first question, let's see, what did you bring for your dorm freshman year that you found really useful? So packing tips, uh, we'll be including that in our next newsletter, but just to figure out you know, what you guys brought, something that was really helpful those first few weeks. I had a toolkit, um, which seems like it wouldn't be useful, but you can get a small toolkit um, and bring it with you. It helps with like hanging things up, um, post not posters, but like paintings and things like that. 
Um, so I had a toolkit. It ended up being pretty useful. We had a tape measure so that when we wanted to measure our room so we could get an appropriately sized couch, um, that was easy to do. So if you want to bring a toolkit, it could indeed come in handy. <laughs> Anything else anybody brought? Um, pictures from home. Um, pictures of my family, pictures of my pets, of my friends. Um, it really helped when like I started feeling homesick or when or maybe like someone just asked, Oh, what's your family like? And I'm just like, here they are. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. Yeah, that's real. I think mm. the twin extra long sheets are really important. Um don't bring twin sheets, it's twin XL. Um, so that's an essential. You definitely <laughs> want to have somewhere to sleep when you get here. So <laughs> bring those to an extra large uh, bedding. Definitely. Mm, I would say for the first couple of weeks, a water bottle. However, they would give mm -hmm. us free water bottles later on. So that was really cool to have. Um, besides that, if you happen to have a roommate who is just like really dope and amazing, like they'll probably bring an iron. But then, like if you can get an iron, mm. like that's really clutch. Oh, iron is yeah, yeah. essential. Or like a hair yeah. blower, like hair dryer. dryer. Yeah. yeah, you can you can usually plan with your roommates when you find out who they are. Mm -hmm. Like message them. Mm -hmm. I brought the iron for my room. Someone else said they take care of getting the refrigerator. Um, so just stay in contact with them so you don't have like seven irons in your room and no one has a blow dryer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, if you're on the shorter side, a step stool, definitely yeah. use it. <laughs> All right. Um, moving on to the second question. Was it hard to make friends at first? That's a good one. Hard one. Anyway. I think, like, during opening days, which is, like, the first week, like, when you start to, like, when you get to know your entryway or, like, the people that are going to be living on your floor and, like, in your building, like, you definitely start to build a community within that. And, like, they are the people that you'll be, like, having grabbing meals with, mostly because you don't know anyone else. But, like, I think everyone's just really open and friendly. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. no one's ever, like, get away from me or anything like that. Like, everyone, like, especially since it's, like, your first week of college. No one's just going to turn you away or, like, not want to, not going to want to be your friend. Everyone's really nice. Especially because, like, as Diana said, it is college. No one knows anyone, pretty much. Maybe a few people from your high school that go with you, um, come with you. But for most people, it's not the case. Um, so pretty much thousands of people here just also don't know anyone. So they have to talk to other people. Um, so it makes it a lot easier. You shouldn't worry about it too much, I would say. Yeah, we also have entryways, which are kind of the way in which they'll divide up the dorms to make them kind of smaller units and that way you can get to know people who live in your building a lot more, which I love my entryway. It was a pretty small one. We had maybe 12 people and it was also, we would get meals together all the time and it was nice just to have people along with you who, you know, were in the same living situation as you and could, you know, get through college, ask each other questions about things, go to you know, try out the same classes together a lot of times, study together, and that was really nice because you all just live so close that it's a lot easier to, you know, go downstairs and ask for help with homework or, you know, go shopping or things like that together. And you also have a lot of study breaks uh, with your entryway. So throughout the year, um, you'll see very quickly there's always ice cream socials and um, what are some of the good ones that you junk guys have? A lot of junk food <laughs> Olympics um, that you have with your entryway. Well, I have um, McDonald's study breaks. I've really <laughs> had like old childhood snacks study break. Oh yeah. Um, so there's a lot of uh, events that you have with your entryway to kind of build that community your first year. Um, you can also join a cultural group or a student group on campus. That's a really good way to make friends. Um, getting involved in something new uh, during the during your time here is a really great way to just meet new people, um, make new friends, and discover new things about yourself. I'm going to move on to the next question. Um, how significantly more difficult were classes and ad and adapting to academic life? So kind of about the academic transition from high school <laughs> to college. I think the biggest thing, at least for me, um, was that you actually have so much more free time in college than you mm -hmm. do in high school, and it's hard it's to manage that. I know first semester, um, I had class maybe till 2 o'clock in the day. And I only had class from 10 to 2, so that's only four hours of class 
for most days, um, where you're as you're usually used to being in school for something like seven hours. So you have a lot more free time. Um, so you have to learn how to balance that instead of you know maybe every day I shouldn't go hang out with people for twelve hours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just knowing like you know join only a few clubs. Don't join every club because you have so many more options here. Mm -hmm. um, and just choosing how to spend your time wisely, that was the hardest thing for me, mm -hmm. um, time management, because you have so much more time. It means you have more time to socialize, but it's also, you know, how do you split that time between academics, friends, clubs, and organizations, and things like that. So that was definitely like, the biggest um, thing for me. Yeah, I think for me, the uh, biggest transition was going from, like, having homework every night and, and stuff that was very concrete that you would do day to day to just studying. When, when people said that they would, you know, go, they're studying for, you know, for their class. I'm like, what does that even mean, you know? And I think getting into the habit of not just studying right before an exam or your midterm, mm -hmm. but really throughout the course and and becoming familiar with course material even for the next class period, because that really helps with understanding and and really utilizing the class period the most effective way. And I think a really good way in which, um, you know, I was able to make that transition a lot easier was just asking a lot of my peers their study habits, like what they did to study well. I didn't, you know, I had a very different way of going about it than a lot of them. And I think a lot of people are here because they've kind of mastered that. They're, they're pretty good at studying. And so asking my friends in, who were in the same classes as me, you know, what, what were they doing to study? Was it, you know, flashcards? Was it just reviewing material, doing notes? What, were, what was it that they were doing? And even forming study groups was really mm -hmm. helpful in making that transition as smooth as possible. Yeah, like the transition can definitely be rough. For me, I had a very rough transition academically coming into college. Um, but I think what really, I think what I really realized later on, which was like in my sophomore year actually, was like at the end of the day when I came in, it was like I was coming from my high school where I was one of the few top performing students. And like coming in, a lot of us are pretty much like that. But then we forget that like, Yes, you might have been able to do it a little bit on your own in high school, but once you get here, the rigor is just a lot more. Um, it's a lot more difficulty in terms of your classes. Once I finally learned how to ask for help, like Liz said, like it made everything so much easier. Um, so like I went through my whole freshman year basically like not asking anyone for help. But then once I started asking for help from proctors and tutors, which like proctors and tutors are basically um, the people who are going to be in your um, ent entryway or your dorm, who are there to help you basically with anything you have to do when it comes to adjusting to the college environment. Once I started to go to them a little bit more and just like ask upperclassmen for help and people in my classes for help, like things got so much easier. So the beautiful thing is that even though it might be hard for you to transition into Harvard academically and just college in general, um, you're always gonna have a bunch of advisors and upperclassmen that are here to help you. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Okay. Um. How hard is it to handle college work while also having a job? I think this ties in really nicely to our last question um, because as Marley pointed out, there is a lot of free time during uh, in college. Um, like I, you have like around eight to like 14 maybe hours of class a week, which is a lot less than in high school. Um, so you have a lot of free time and it's very easy to just um, hang out with friends and like, eat and stay in the dining hall instead of doing work. Um, so for me personally, I've always worked since I got here um, and it's helped me really manage my time better. Um, instead of having all this free space, I have some you know time where I work and then I have like a couple of hours to work on schoolwork and I'm not tempted to go back to my dorm and just watch Netflix. Um, you know, I know that I have to be ready for work too. So I set aside some time to do homework as well. Um, work <laughs> uh, here and I found it to be a good way to manage my time um, and we are going to be talking a lot more about uh, for those of you who want to work during your time here if you want to find a job um, there's a lot of resources here at Harvard for you to do so so we'll include that in our next newsletter but has anybody else have any experiences working during your time here so I have a part-time job in addition that I got during spring semester. Um, my first semester, I just wanted to focus on like the academic transition. So I didn't like get a job until the second semester. Um, <clears throat> but from like, from my experience, I think like most of the jobs that are actually like on the jobs database that like are available to Harvard students, um, they're very like understanding and flexible um, in terms of like understanding that you're a student, 
and that you have like classes and sometimes like you can't do certain hours and um they don't like require like a lot of hours out of you like for like it usually ranges from like six to eight four to eight hours really during the week yeah minimum so so um even if sometimes um I remember I went into work and they were like, oh, if you ever feel like, if we know midterms are coming up, so if you ever feel like you need, if you can't work as much this week because um, you have to study or it's like it's really important or you have like projects to do, like we completely understand. So in that sense, um, finding like time to balance like work and uh, homework and like just classes, it, it's like, it's really great here because they're just also understanding. Most, most employers here are pretty understanding. And you can also get a job here that relates to some of your academic interests. So there's a lot of opportunities to do research here for a faculty member. And those opportunities are available um, from the moment you step on campus. So you, as a freshman, you can be doing research and stuff that maybe aligns more closely to your academic interests or maybe career interests. Uh, you can be an intern at an office, which is what um, I know that you you have interned for an office here on campus, right? Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> a little complicated. Um, I've been an intern for the Office of Student Life, for example, for um, around over a year now. Um, so that's really cool. I get to know how the behind the scenes of how college works, um, and that's been a really great experience. That um, has been a, supple, supplements my uh, academic time in the classroom um, and very beneficial just to also have work experience and to build up your resume and stuff like that. Um, do you have any other comments? Okay. <laughs> um, we're going to move on to our next question. What's the best way to find out about the hundreds of opportunities that exist at Harvard but aren't really advertised? So for example, funding for research projects, working as a liaison at the Institute of Politics, et cetera. I think one of <laughs> I'll start. <laughs> one of the biggest resources here on this campus are your upperclassmen. Um, so the people here, the sophomores, juniors, seniors who have been through the process already, they have so much knowledge and experience, um, and they will know all the little secrets, secret tips, and secret resources, stuff that isn't so heavily advertised. Um, and that's a really great way to be connected to different opportunities and a much more personal way than just um, it's different. It's a different thing to apply to a to a job that you know you've never heard about before, um, and different to have a person who maybe has worked there before recommend you, and then you submit an application. Um, so upperclassmen here are one of your biggest resources. Um, definitely encourage you to reach out, uh, make friends, ask your peer advising fellow. I'm sure they've done a lot of cool things during their time here, um, but there's a lot of ways. So, uh, do you guys have any ways that you have found out about some? Some of the more or less advertised resources here at Harvard? Sometimes actually in office hours. Um, so like I've had a lot of friends who they might talk to a TF or like a teaching fellow, which is basically like the equivalent of a teaching assistant elsewhere. Um, sometimes they'll talk to a TF or they'll talk to the professor who's teaching them a course. They might just be interested in like one week of a topic that the professor is working on. They just find out that after talking to the professor at office hours, they get a research opportunity from that. Um, pretty much that like... Actually happened to me. That, yeah. that was actually the way that I got my last year summer job uh i decided to be brave and go meet with my professor and then he told me about this great opportunity and i applied and i got it <laughs> so go meet with your professor <laughs> yeah. also yeah. like going back to upperclassmen like on the set um one of the biggest things that so even this job i got right here i got it off of an email list so like a lot of students they run a lot of email lists mm -hmm. um and so they'll just send out things like you know to like the for example, one of my biggest email lists is like the Black Men's Forum, which is just like one of the biggest organizations here that I'm part of. Um, and like, I just got my job off of that. I applied and before you know what I got. It. So like, if I had not looked at the email list from upperclassmen, I would not have even known about this job. Um, and so it's really just looking for different opportunities through that, but usually you can get through your I think college is also about like, there's a lot of independence. So a lot of it also relies on how much you're willing to go out there and look for the opportunities yourself. Um, as much as like upperclassmen and um, email lists are willing to help, like you have to go out there and be willing to be like, hey, can you put me on this email list or like reach out to upperclassmen and professors. So it's also like you just going out there, going to the Institute of Politics, going to these talks and just like meeting people. So like being willing to like network and things of that sort, just to like try to get these opportunities. 
And I know that can be a little bit more challenging for some people, but um, we're really lucky here at Harvard to have whole offices dedicated to connecting students to these opportunities. Uh, so for example, the Office of Career Services is a huge resource. They have a lot of money to fund research opportunities, summer travel, um, all these things. And they know that you're a freshman and that your resume maybe is not gonna look like that of a senior student here. Um, and they work with you personally to help build that up. Um, and you don't have to feel you know, shy or embarrassed because they've dealt with like any situation you could think of, they've dealt with it. So um, I know that I waited way too long to go there myself and that's something um, that I wish I had done sooner when I got here. Um, it could have saved me a lot of trouble, but um, in terms of these email lists that we're, we keep talking about, um, at the beginning of your few weeks here, there's gonna be a big student activities fair where all the different uh, student groups on campus will have a little booth and you'll have the opportunity to put in your email address and then you're getting inundated with a ton of emails and all these student groups are trying to recruit you to join their student group. Um, but these email listservs usually contain a lot of useful uh, job information, internship information, and just uh, really cool events to attend. Um, so it's a great way also to not just you know find jobs, but also uh, make new friends and meet new people and become a part of a community here at Harvard. Okay, <laughs> next question. Um, all right. Do you recommend joining a lot of clubs at the beginning of freshman year or just one to two? I, I personally um, would recommend joining a small number. Um, I know for my first semester, actually for all freshman year, I actually didn't participate in any clubs and I wouldn't necessarily encourage that. I definitely think it's a good idea to join extracurricular organizations. Um, but if you do choose to do so, I would say one or two, just because you do want to have time to adjust to the new educational environment. Because no matter what um, high school you come from um, or what college you go to, even honestly, college work will always be harder than the work you had in high school. And you do want time um, to focus on that. And also just to make other friends and hang out with friends you may have outside of these clubs. Um, so I think it's nice to have that extra time available to you and to be able to focus on something you love and not totally be sort of scattered um, between a bunch of different things because then you can you have less time to commit to each organization mm -hmm. so in general even after freshman year I would say stick to a, a smaller number um, but I'm not sure if you guys would. Yeah. Oh, yeah I totally agree I did the opposite of Marley but came to the same conclusion <laughs> and I went to that activities fair got really excited all of you know the yeah all of the different clubs that were offered were, were things that, you know, those didn't exist at my other, at my high school. And just to see all of that was really exciting. So of course I wrote down my email for all the clubs and was just very <laughs> overwhelmed. And I think I signed up for like at, at least seven different clubs, which is insane. Why would you do that? Um, so I would definitely recommend sticking to one or two because even with that, I only really committed to one or two clubs. and. Um, I found that to be a lot more enjoyable to focus on just those ones that you were really passionate about. And um, yeah, I think they great they build really great communities as well. So just to like invest in that community uh, is a lot easier when it's just one or two. So that would definitely be my recommendation as well as one or two clubs is, is good. <laughs> and one of the things I like to like recommend to people is like, you being able to benefit from a club does not necessarily mean full out commitment. You know, so like, <laughs> If you want to benefit from a club and you just want to go to a really cool event that they're publicizing, feel free, go to that. You know, it's like a two hour, maybe one hour type of commitment that you have to do. But you don't have to go in there and try to like get every single leadership position and walk me in there because that's just really stressful. And like adjusting to college academically is really important. I wish I did that. Um, but coming here now, like I think at most two that like you really, really like, and like that's just enough. Everything else you can just go to like really cool events, go to the IOP, go here, go there. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do a lot. Um, all right, so next question. Hold on, <laughs> I lost it. Okay, what are your tips for choosing the right classes when there are so many options? That's a really good one. That's a good yeah, that's a good one. And just a reminder, you can also submit questions um, as we are talking, and we'll answer those too. Um, Please do it. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> all right. Um, so we do have a lot of courses here at Harvard. Um, 3,500 courses to choose from. Exactly. Um, and it can definitely feel overwhelming coming in. Um, what I did my freshman year, which I would recommend to other students, um, I know everybody kind of has a different way of doing it. Um, I came to college undecided on my major, um, and I just 
as a lot of students do here at Harvard, and Harvard actually does like that. We are a liberal arts school. They want you to explore. Um, I just looked through all the courses available and just picked out the things that seemed interesting to me. Um, and I know my freshman year, like I took science fiction class. Um, I took a class called What is Mental Illness? Um, I took a class on film um, where we just watched movies. And mm -hmm. I just picked all these really interesting classes um, that I just found, you know, I was like, well, you know, I'm kind of interested in that. Let me just explore. And I really took my first year to just explore and do things that take classes that I love and take classes that I'm interested in. Um, and I wouldn't have changed that at all. Um, through that experience, I was able to find my major, sociology, and that's what I really connected to. Um, and it was a very natural process for me. I don't think um, that that first year really is a time to explore, find new interests, discover new things. Um, and taking a broad range of classes will definitely do that. Um, you don't have to go in and try to take five classes, try to take cl to prove yourself or anything like that. It's really you're at a place now that you can learn anything, um, and that's such a great experience. Um, I also took a freshman seminar. That was the one that I uh, talked about, which was what is mental illness. Um, and I loved that class. It was um, just met once a week, and we got to meet with a professor and just around like nine other students. Um, and it was obviously not letter graded, so it was just sat or unsat, um, so very low pressure and just a cool way to um, take a course. And I would definitely recommend uh, doing a freshman seminar as well. Anybody else have any suggestions? Yeah, I think um, I had a very similar experience. I came in, wanted to study everything, but nothing at the same time. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I think a really great resource for me was actually my academic advisor uh, and that's kind of just one of the people that's going to be part of your advising team literally the second you step on campus you have your own advising team uh, and my academic advisor she was part of the faculty at the college and you know I kind of explained that I had a, a very large array of interest and was a little worried that um, that wouldn't be something that would be necessarily supported um, but she was really great in helping me like pointing out a lot of classes that I hadn't been looking at prior um, and really helping me balance my schedule too I think that's something that can sometimes be overlooked and there are classes that tend to be a heavier workload and uh, because she had experience with the system and with these classes she was able to point out you know, maybe don't take these two classes the same semester. Maybe spread that out and um, have that kind of diversity in your course load as well, uh, which was really helpful for me in picking out which classes I wanted to do each semester. Anybody else? Yeah, like in the beginning of the semester, every single semester, um, this thing called Shopping Week that we have, um, where we basically just like go and this thing called Shopping Week, where we basically just go and like talk about. Um, <laughs> and search like different classes. We just go to lectures, go to seminars, and just like try to pick a bunch of classes. For me in the beginning, one big piece about like me looking for classes since I also came to college undecided was since we met a lot of people in the beginning, I just started low-key like following friends um, to different classes. <laughs> and then when you follow friends to different classes, like you realize like, wait a minute, like this is actually interesting to read the syllabus and it's like, I actually want to take this. And like your whole entire shopping week is completely scrapped. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, like in freshman year, like you just pick cool classes that you just found with your friends. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a really big part. Just like when you meet people, you also meet new interests, new, new intellectual pieces of yourself. Anybody else? Um, I think just like taking advantage of the fact like freshman year is definitely like a year to just explore what you're interested in. like as Elizabeth and Lewis pointed out. So it's just like, you don't have to, if you're like coming in as pre-med, um, you don't have to take like the hard science courses like right off the bat. Um, I think as you go further, like as you join Harvard, as you continue on with your four years here, you'll definitely like, you'll take those courses eventually, but like your first year since it's like, there's like so much room for flexibility within your schedule, really taking advantage of that. Um, I don't like, I took, I really like horror movies. So like my freshman seminar was horror and film and literature. I really love that class. Um, second semester, um, I've always wanted to learn about ancient Egypt as a little kid. So I um, did a class on ancient Egyptian archeology span and um, none of those were like kind of in line with like science, like history and science, which I'm gonna do. 
but um, I really like, I got to explore like what I want to do before like I actually have to get more like intensive science courses. So I really enjoyed it. Um, definitely one of the best parts of your first year. Thank you. Um, so our next question, um, is there anything I should do over the summer to help prepare for college? That's a really good question. Um, <laughs> and like I said, you guys are free to send us questions. Please send us questions. <laughs> uh, we, love, we love answering them. So um, just to repeat the question, is there anything I should do over the summer to help prepare for college? Whatever you want. Like, if yeah. you're someone who wants to do a summer program before you come to college, um, you feel free to do that. If you're someone who likes to sleep, which is what I did before I came to college, so <laughs> feel free yeah. to sleep. Um, you want to just go out with your friends, go out with your family, you can go on vacation, or just chill at home, pretty much whatever you want to do before you come. There's no need for you to, you know, get extra help or, like, any type of enrichment before you come here, honestly, because, like, if Harvard has decided to admit you before you come here, like, they know you can handle the work. So there's really no need for you to do any extra, anything extra in terms of like getting ready for the academic workload here. Um, but unless you guys want to add anything. Spend time with family and your pets because you're going to miss them. <laughs> yeah, you're going to miss them so much more than you think. Um, <laughs> I miss my dog so much. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate cooking, home cooking. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing I would recommend, and this will be included in the next newsletter as well, um, is to just take some time to really reflect on your experiences so far. Um, you've gotten into Harvard. That, that's an amazing accomplishment. Um, and don't forget that um, as you begin your Harvard career, it can be easy to forget that <laughs> and um, kind of forget um, all the hard work you did to get to this place. So really just take some time to reflect on that accomplishment. Really give yourself some time. Be easy on yourself. And um, like we were discussing earlier today, um, it might be helpful to sit down and maybe write a list of things that you know you want to do during your time here at Harvard. Uh, what you really want to get out of your freshman year um, can be helpful. Something that's you know, obviously open to change um, because you will change a lot when you get here. Um, and it's nice to look back on that and be able to see your growth and see the things you've accomplished during your time here. And little things count. Like mm -hmm. I went and talked to a new person today. That's totally valid. Um, <laughs> so definitely, I think taking the time to really reflect before having that quiet time to yourself before um, opening you know, opening days is, is really nice to have um, because it gets, it, you just hit the ground running once you're here. Um, so definitely take some time over the summer to just chill out and, you know, mm -hmm. reset before the school year starts. Uh, I think would be very helpful. Anybody else have any tips? I think a final thing, it's like a little small thing, honestly. Um, so prior to college, there's going to be like a lot of school sales where you can like buy a lot of materials, like mm -hmm. notebooks and pens and stuff. Feel free to buy a few materials, but do not go overboard. Like, yeah. <laughs> you'll find out what you need when you get here and you read your syllabus and you figure out what, what your professor actually requires. Like, you don't have to buy, like, a lump sum of things because most of the things my roommates bought, they actually didn't use them. So That's true. don't mm -hmm. feel the need to do that. Okay. <clears throat> do you have recommendations on a planner app to keep up with studies and busy schedules? Google Shout Calendar. To Google. Google, Google, Google Calendar. Google Calendar. <laughs> oh my God! Download that. Learn oh, yeah. how to use it. It's so useful. Sync it to your phone. Your yeah. life will revolve around the Google Calendar app. <laughs> Learn to use Gmail. Things like that. Yeah, Google Drive. Google Drive. Do everything on Google Drive. <laughs> Dropbox. Dropbox. Dropbox is your friend. Please save all your notes into Dropbox because you don't want your computer to crash and then you yeah. lose all your notes for your class. So definitely make sure you're backing up your file. It, it, ha it happens. It yeah. just happens. Yeah, it happens. It invariably happens. Or you're working on another computer and you forget to like, that happened to someone. They were working on a library computer and they saved the document to the computer, <laughs> but not to like their oh. own Google Drive. And they worked out like eight pages. And then they left, they signed on the computer. They're like, oh my God, I didn't save it. And they realized this at night. So they went back the next day and it was all erased. So Google Drive is your best friend now. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, anybody else have any apps or things that they yeah. use? I, my like first to-do list uh, of the semester started with a planner. I keep it wherever <laughs> I go, actually. Uh, I think that's really helpful. I'm more of a, 
like a visual person, I have to color code and, and things like that. So I also use uh, Google Calendar. Okay. Sorry, Google Calendar. Yeah, but I think for like planning out, you know, what I'm gonna do for the day in terms of studying, I, I like to write it down. So I just went to Staples and bought kind of their like two dollar planners. So that was really helpful yeah. for me. I think like for me creating different folders within Dropbox like for each of my classes during the semester was really helpful mm -hmm. too. Um, like other pro tip like I would um, once I get this syllabus for each class like I would print it out and then put in the dates of all the assignments on my Google Calendar beforehand so I can get a good idea of when all my finals um, hit and like when are midterms and start mentally preparing myself for that as well so that at the end of the semester I'm not like oh my god I have four finals <laughs> like mm -hmm. in four days um so trying to space that out has been really helpful for me and help um helping me with time management and making sure I'm on top of my stuff and being less stressed out in general um unfortunately I only discovered that you know junior year <laughs> but <laughs> so <laughs> it's good to know as a freshman I think for sure Anything else anybody does to organize? I know email can get really overwhelming mm -hmm. as well. So creating folders on Gmail is also very helpful. Um, making sure you filter messages from different student groups because those can quickly just, you know, overflow your inbox. So just being aware that that's probably going to happen at some point. Getting in the habit of checking your emails every morning. Mm -hmm. Every, every single every morning or else you're going to miss an important email, yeah. like missing an email that you need to bring your laptop to class and then you show up and you're the only person without their laptop. I learned yeah. from experience. <laughs> right. Um, let's see. All right. We have a good one here. What were you most afraid of or intimidated by in the weeks approaching your transition to college? <laughs> so I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna repeat that one more time. What were you most afraid of or intimidated by in the weeks approaching your transition to college? I was just afraid of fitting in, um, especially as a first gen student. Um, we were just really afraid of like what everyone's thinking, what everyone will think of you. Like, um, may, what, like will these people like me? Like things like that. Um, I mean, but you learn that it's college, like, I think that's really, <laughs> like, everyone just accepts you for, like, who you are and, like, what you do. Everyone, like, respects you, and they're all very friendly, and they respect where you come from. Um, there's no need to try to be, like, a different person that you're not already. I feel like at college, I became, like, the person that I am, like, like truly am. I, I've never, like put up a facade or anything just to like try to impress people like I'm just like take me as I am like um but yeah like the thing I was most nervous about anybody else yeah I think definitely the people I relate to that a lot I think I was coming in and um you know people they got into Harvard that's pretty amazing I think just like what Anna said I can I can forget that I too was accepted into Harvard. I just like I'll literally walk around and, and be like, oh my goodness, that person got into Harvard. Like that's insane to me still. Um, and I think just like, yeah, I think that was definitely thing. I was I was concerned that people would be overly competitive, um, that they would, you know, form these kind of these cliques that were very ingrained. Uh, I know like in high school that's a big thing. I grew up with I went to school with the same people for 13 years. So, you know, everyone already knew, like, where you belonged in the system of, of culture of the school. Um, but, and so I thought it would just be kind of like that. I would go into my same niche, uh, and it would be, you know, not, not a place where I could be myself, as Diana said. And so it was really cool coming on campus and seeing how normal people are <laughs> is pretty incredible, uh, how really down-to-earth people are, uh, especially in my entryway. That was kind of my first... Um, interaction with people and I was expecting you know every word to come out of their mouth to be this philosophical debate that I never even thought of <laughs> and they were just talking about music and movies and books that I had heard of and so that was really exciting to see that people are normal and um, you'll like fit it which is nice. People do get philosophical though but when they do it's really yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I think for me, like same thing, I was really scared that I wasn't going to fit in um, as a low income student, as a first gen student. Um, I was really worried. I was wondering why I was accepted to Harvard. Um, and it's very common to feel that way for, for all students who come from all different kinds of backgrounds. Everybody still does experience that, like feeling like an imposter here to some degree. Um, but I feel like as a senior now, thinking about everything that I would have done differently um, my four years here, I know that my freshman year, I wasted so much time just you know, being worried and holding myself back and being scared when I could have been going out and really engaging with my, uh, you know, with the college community, with my entryway, when I could have been making friends. Um, and I shouldn't have had to wait so long to do that. Um, and I could have started that my freshman year. Um, but a lot of it, it wasn't people who, you know, made me feel bad necessarily. It was just myself being so self-conscious and um, so scared that, you know, I didn't belong here, that I missed you know, a lot of opportunities to make friends, make connections, um, be integrated into the community. Um, so while you may experience that feeling, like it's totally normal, just know that, you know, no matter how much, how confident other people look, like everyone sort of struggles with this to, to a certain degree, uh, to varying degrees. Um, and you're perfectly normal. You belong here. Um, there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> and you will find friends here, definitely. Um, and I see um you know i it could have it was so much easier than i thought that i made it than what i made it seem in like in my head um so my advice is just to take the leap and like do things that that make you a little scared um you know going up to a table of a bunch of strangers at annenberg like that can seem a little scary but really you don't really have anything to lose um but you have so much to gain you can make a new friend make a new connection if they don't like you it's whatever there's 1,600 people in your <laughs> class, like you're definitely gonna make a friend there. Um, so don't put too much stress on yourself. I know it can it can be a little scary, at least for me, I was like very shy uh, when I first got here, but look at me now. <laughs> um, so if I could do it, you can definitely do it. Any other suggestions? Okay, um, so we're, you can feel free to send in your last minute questions. We're probably gonna wrap up um, in a few minutes, um, but we'll just hit on a couple more questions. And um, if you guys send us any questions now, we'd be happy to answer them for you as well. Um, okay. Does it ever get lonely at Harvard? That's a tough one. <laughs> That's a, you guys are asking the hard questions. Thank you. I guess like it can get lonely just in the sense that you're away from home now. Um, so I'm from New York City, so that's not that far away. Uh, but it is four hours, so you know it's like kind of hard to. You can't go home every weekend necessarily. A lot of people here can't go home and see their family. Um, so it's definitely a different experience in that you know when you come back to your room and you're upset because of I don't know whatever happened that day. You know you can't run to your mom or your dad and ask for help. Um, but I will say that um, your roommates, at least for me, especially. One of my roommates became my best friend, and I got super close to the people in my entryway. Um, so sometimes you might feel alone, at least for me. It was like sometimes I'm homesick, and it's, it's just different not having your family there. Um, but in some ways, at least for me, my roommates and my entryway kind of became a substitute for family. Um, of course, it's not the same, but that's kind of how I dealt with um, loneliness here. Anybody else have any suggestions? Um, I think it was like um, during the first week, um, I was like def I was a lot shyer than like back then like when we first came into college as opposed to like now. Now I'm a lot more outgoing but like the first week or so I would just sometimes I'd find myself alone in my room and then like I'd just be like oh my god like <laughs> I'm so nervous but then I like I had a revelation I was like what the heck am I doing I'm at college more than that I like I'm at Harvard like why am I like alone in my room and then like I just started talking to like one of my sweet mates and like she was a lot more outgoing than I was. So I just like went along, like I tagged along with her to like a lot of different places. Like I learned to like just put myself out there mm -hmm. and just like, um, so I just like being like, you don't have to be lonely here. You just, it's yeah. more of a thing of like reaching out to like people that like, there are a lot more people here that like care about you, whether it be your advisors, your uh, peer advising fellows or your paths, your entryway mates, your roommates, like there are people here that care about you. So um, it's definitely like 
especially as you make more friends, you you actually find it like harder to be alone because um, you're, you're like in group chats and like people are like, hey, what are you up to? Are you getting a meal? Like, so it's actually kind of hard to be alone here. It's really, it, it's nice. Yes. Yeah. And that's definitely true. Um, going off of Diana, um, a lot of the loneliness that I experienced my freshman year was like self-inflicted. Um, it was like I was being alone because, you know, I didn't want to put myself out there. I didn't feel comfortable reaching out and thinking that I could do everything on my own because I've done everything on my own till that point, applying to college by myself, filling out financial aid by myself. And I thought I could bring that same attitude to college. And it took me a while to realize, actually, you know, what am I doing to myself? Like, I, I'm making myself lonely. I'm doing this all on my own. I'm making this so much harder than it should be. Um, finding out that there are people here, there are whole offices dedicated to just helping you. And realizing that, yes, I could take advantage of those resources was really empowering. And uh, realizing that, you know, I'm not a burden to my friends. Like, they, they do want to hear what's going on with my life. They want to, they want me to text them they want me to go sit with them and at dinner and realizing that you know i am not a burden and everyone is sort of experiencing all of these feelings you know um that i'm normal and feeling comfortable getting to that point where i was comfortable asking friends for help and asking my proctor for help asking my path for help um and they really did a great job of uh easing a lot of that homesickness that i felt my first year here all right so we're gonna do do just like one last question um, and then we'll wrap up, okay? Um, all right, so let's see. <laughs> Think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> okay, um, this is a tough one. What was the most challenging aspect of being the first person to attend college in your family? Oh. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. I think for me, uh, there was a lot of, I felt pressure to be okay all the time. Um, because like, I, I know that my family sacrificed so much for me to be here. And like, I, I'm not here on my own will, like, like everyone, everyone in my life has, has helped me to get to this point. And so, like, I I feel like a, a duty to them in a, in a sense to like be perfect here, like to get perfect grades and, and be happy all the time and never feel lonely, never feel, you know, like I'm missing out on anything, taking advantage of all my resources. Um, and so I think it was, it was a little difficult to feel like it's okay to not be okay sometimes. Uh, and I, I kind of thought that my family wouldn't want to hear that, but really once I was able to open up to my family about that, about, you know, the, the struggles I was having in, in academics or, uh, you know, a, a fight I had with a roommate or, or things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, it was it was really nice because they would, they would be able to help me and they could be that support system to me. Uh, and then I could do that with the friends around me and, and reach out to these different, you know, support systems because I knew that my main support system at home was, was okay, that I, you know, am, you know, college is challenging and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that was definitely the biggest thing to, to deal with is like having that, that pressure to, you know, make everything worth it for my family, but being okay in that, you know, that's a process and that takes time. Uh, huh. Um, I guess the hardest thing about, or the most difficult thing about being, um, the first person in your family to go to college was that. Um, sometimes, like, I feel like sometimes it was hard to kind of communicate the problems I'd been having <clears throat> at school, um, because my mom didn't go to college, my one brother only went to college for, like, two years, and then my other brother didn't go to college, so, like, saying, oh, I'm having trouble, like, scheduling my lab, or in, like, this class, or like, oh, like the dining hall, like the food isn't that great, or like, thing, like things of that sort. Just like, um, I mean, I guess like they would try to understand as best they could, um, but just even if they didn't like, couldn't understand like some things that I had been going through, 
um, I just found still like so much love and support from like from my family. Um, you know, they helped in every single way they could. And every time that I call or that every time that I get like that I'd message, they'd be like, oh, do you like need anything? Or like my brother would always be like, are you sure you have enough money for textbooks? Um, do you need any money to like go to CVS this week or like buy groceries? So like, um, I guess so like being a first gen student, like there's like some things that like your family may not be able to understand, but that's okay because they can help out in so many different ways that like don't have to do with like educational stuff or like, things pertaining to college like i would get like nervous before tests or like just even celebrating like when i like finally passed my first quiz like i was like i passed my first quiz and they like helped celebrate with me like they were just like we're so proud like um so they just understood how much of a big deal it was and just like they don't have to understand every single thing about like college or like all like all these things you just have to know that they're there to support you and they love you and they're so proud of like what you've accomplished Okay, thank you, Diana. All right, so unfortunately, this is the end of our time here. Um, we look, we are really, really super excited to meet you all when you come in the fall. Um, this is such a great accomplishment, getting into Harvard, uh, being a first generation student. Um, that's amazing. And uh, just know that no matter what emotion you're experiencing right now, whether that's super excited or maybe a little nervous, um, you have such a warm, welcoming community here of first-gen students and students who aren't first-gen too, but still love us, <laughs> um, <laughs> that are here to provide you with support on your college journey. You don't have to do this by yourself. And as you can see, uh, if you ever see us around on campus, uh, feel free to stop us by and say hello. Um, it'll make us feel <laughs> like we're famous. So please do. Um, and I hope to see some of you all at our first gen welcome event. We'll have more details uh, coming soon, but we'll have a welcome for all the first gen students here on campus uh, so you can meet some of your peers um, and some of the first gen upperclassmen here as well. Um, but thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to meeting you soon.